in um, behind Start This Helpline was to provide direct support to people, uh, primarily women and um, young children, uh, whenever they face online harassment. So this is a very big issue here, um, especially because of our cultural context. Uh, people may have access to laptops and cell phones, um, and when they use the internet, they're never really taught how to protect themselves online or what are the dangers that they may, might face online. Um, you know, uh, the especially when, you know, we used to go around doing training sessions at schools and colleges, a lot of girls would come up to us and ask questions about, you know, how they're being blackmailed or threatened online when their pictures are being uh, shared without their consent or have been taken without their consent. Um, and uh, it, they don't even have to be intimate pictures, uh, really. I mean, because uh, Pakistan is such a conservative society, even sharing the uh, you know, just a person's face, uh, you know, if it's a young woman's face, can be very harmful for her, uh, for her reputation. Uh, she can be stopped from, you know, attending school, going to work. Uh, in some cases, uh, you know, young women have also been uh, killed for just having an online presence or having their pictures put up online without their consent. So someone else has taken a picture and they've been put online. And uh, for some reason, well, not for some reason, but the blame always somehow uh, lands on the woman, of course. So I can I can start my video too. I just realized I haven't done that. Um, but so our purpose in behind starting this helpline was so that you know women who thought that they didn't have anywhere to go, that they didn't have any support or help um, or any place to ask questions. Uh, we would be able to, um, you know, provide that direct support. So they could call in on our helpline um, and, you know, anonymously, confidentially, they could ask any questions they want. We could provide the support that, uh, you know, the best uh, practices that they could, um, that they could adopt to protect, protect themselves online. So once they are facing online harassment and even to, you know, preemptively protect themselves. Um, luckily, in 2016, uh, Pakistan uh, passed the Prevention of Electronic Crimes Act, uh, which isn't perfect, but it's still something. It's still a good start. Um, and uh, a specific law enforcement agency was designated to investigate cyber crimes, and um, specific um, sections were um, identified to uh, protect them well, protect everyone from um, online harassment. So, uh, you know, sharing pictures, child pornography, um, stalking, uh, sharing personally identifiable information, such as ID cards or birth dates, uh, anything that could be used to identify. So these are some of the sections that, would, that have been highlighted in the um, act, which really helped us because we started our helpline at around the same time. And it helped us because we knew um, that there was we had legal backing. So if we wanted to provide legal help to um, any young woman or girl who reached out to us, we could tell them this, this is, these are the, um, uh, the laws that protect you. This is the agency that protects you, uh, that you can go to for help instead of going to the police. And we recognize and understand your reservations about going to the police because it's not always easy. Um, there's always that fear that uh, they will uh, create some public drama, we'll end up, you know, our story will end up on the media, we'll, you know, our family will be involved, um, designating a separate uh, investigation agency and hearing about it from us through the helpline really helped those women feel more secure in seeking legal help. Um, at this helpline, we also provide uh, mental health support because a lot of times, um, and we've heard this multiple, many times, you know, uh, at the helpline, we hear that, you know, we can't go to our family for help. We cannot go to our friends for help because there's always that element of victim blaming and um, uh, they just feel like they're not secure. One, maybe they weren't even allowed to be online in the first place, so they can't go and tell their families. Or if they go to their friends, they won't understand. So there's this, you know, feeling of isolation that comes with, um, if, uh, you know, with online, you know, with 
facing online harassment. Um, so that we provide mental health support in those cases. If people are feeling, you know, very, if they're depressed, if they're feeling anxiety, if they're feeling alone, our first step, our first uh, concern is to provide, uh, is to provide them some sort of um, consolation, is to provide them some sort of um, support, a network, uh, to make them feel like they're not alone, that they can seek help, that they can, um, that, you know, that, um, you know, that they're not completely alone here, that there will be help available for them. Um, and, um, and the, the second thing that we do is provide digital security support. Uh, so, uh, like I, like I was talking about before, uh, we provide tips and, and advice on how to preemptively help, uh, you know, protect yourselves online. So, you know, just very basic, because again, like I said before, uh, people aren't really taught how to protect themselves online. So just even just giving them tips like, uh, you know, uh, going through your privacy settings or how to you know, turn on two-factor authentication or, you know, basic things like that. Or maybe uh, we have digital security experts as well. So if we need some higher um, level of digital security uh, advice, we transfer it over to them. But, you know, very basic tips, we provide them to every, anyone who calls at the helpline. The third thing that we do is provide legal help, which I also talked about um, uh, a bit before. Um, and I don't want to go into too much detail because I really want to hear from everyone else who has joined us. Um, I want this to be like a very open, uh, open group. And instead of me just talking and talking, um, but I will mention that we also have um, escalation channels with various social media companies such as meta uh youtube google uh twitter um so whenever if we require if we want uh some posts to be taken down some accounts to be taken down or recovered after they've been hacked um this direct escalation channel with them with these companies really help us out especially especially when we're talking about um because we really like to so i know i've been stressing on women and young girls uh you know before this but we also work a lot with journalists human rights defenders um lawyers um because they you know more vulnerable occupations who have who are who face even a, a much greater threat um because it affects their work it affects their uh you know, physical uh, uh, security. So whenever um, uh, these escalation channels really help us in providing that help to these vulnerable people who work in these vulnerable occupations. Um, this is the setup that we've um, started here in 2006, uh, 2016. Um, in fact, tomorrow we'll, we will have completed uh, six whole years. Um, and in that, in these six years, we've, um, received about 13, more than 13,000 cases, um, new cases that come, come to us from all over Pakistan and from all over the world too. So because we are available uh, through email, uh, to our help desk email and social media channels as well, we get um, a lot of requests from people all over the world. So um, this is, it's again, it's not perfect, which is why I wanted to, uh, introduce what we're doing here in Pakistan. And I also want to hear from everyone else about what you all have been doing, if there, if you have been providing any sort of direct uh, assistance in your respective regions, um, and what do you, what you think we can do even further? Because the one thing that I have noticed that I really want to work on um, is cross-border collaboration. Um, online harassment isn't just contained within one um, area. Right. We get a lot of requests where the perpetrator or the harasser might be in another country. And then that's that's when the block comes in. We can't really cross borders to identify the perpetrator or, you know, make them, uh, you know, if they have someone's pictures, for example, um, we can't contact law enforcement there to help us uh, get those pictures removed from their possession. So uh, these are some of the problems that I've seen. Um, I would really like to pass it on to anyone who else who would like to uh, introduce themselves and uh, the work that they've been doing or just any, um, any concerns that they've been noticing in this, uh, in this particular uh, field. And uh, yeah, 
So anyone who would like to participate is uh, open to, I'd love to hear. Um, anyone who would like to participate and contribute to higher session, the mic is roaming. So if you just show me where you are, I could bring the mic to you. Thank you, uh, Ira Bazit. I am always a Mr. or Mrs. I, anyway, Ira Bazit. Very thank you. Uh, it, uh, my question is the protection means that when you protect children online, same self as online, facing online harassment, are you using internet filtering? Of course, if you use internet filtering, this will definitely overrides a privilege to access or giving them the opportunity to know more about online activities. What is your mechanism to protect this online? Thank you. I'm not sure that I completely understand your question. Uh, are you talking about protecting uh, protecting children's images online? Uh, my, uh, let me clear my question. Uh, when protecting children, are you using on the internet site or internet filtering, or are we teach them more about uh, how to use the internet to, that is my question. Is it is not clear? Okay. Yeah. So uh, we do have training sessions with children. We go to schools and colleges, or mostly schools, um, to you know provide training and awareness sessions for you know kids of all ages. Um, a lot of schools invite us over to their uh, you know uh, to interact with the kids directly. Um, but for online, I mean, if someone is actually facing such an issue. Um, we don't do anything ourselves. We use online resources such as the IWF portal um, or the Revenge Porn Helpline, um, uh, the stopncii.org. Well, stopncii is mostly for 18 plus, um, but there is the IWF portal. We also try to reach out to, I mean, in our personal capacity, uh, we try to reach out to uh, any host sites or uh, any of the websites that are hosting these kinds of pictures or you know material with children in them um, and try to get them taken down um, and we have been successful uh, pretty much so far um, especially when you mention the word child um, and you present the complaint to host sites such as Cloudflare um, they do take the complaint seriously and they do try to get the pictures taken down um, as soon as possible so I think we try to balance uh both things you know give awareness sessions for you know so that uh they don't fall into that trap uh you know so that kids know that how to prepare themselves uh they know how to protect themselves online for the parents as well because the parents also know need to know how to uh you know how to how to ensure that their children are completely safe online and you know while uh giving them the freedom to explore online spaces as well um, and then we try our, in our own personal capacity to, uh, we don't have a proper mechanism, but we try to do some research and uh, see what can be done to, um, you know, try to undo some of the damage if there, if some, uh, some pictures or information of children have been leaked online. My name is Jutta Koll. I'm from the German Digital Opportunities Foundation working in child rights advocacy. And referring to the question that you have uh, given, 
I would say uh, the filtering software that we know so far can protect children only from accessing content that is not appropriate for their age. But there is no filtering software that could protect children from their images being, being disseminated, being abused uh, in the internet. So um, I don't know whether you've heard about the general command number 25 to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which is dealing completely with uh, uh, children's rights in the digital environment and the general comment says very clearly that filtering software should not be used to restrict the access of children to resources that they that they need also for their development but still we need to protect them from their images being abused. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Robert Ford uh, from, from Rwanda. And uh, I wanted to inquire from uh, our presenter. Um, does Pakistan, where she is presenting from, uh, have a, a specific national child uh, online protection policy? Because at a national level, it should just start with that. We, even without looking at uh, a framework of an international setting, we need to look at how are different nations tackling this at an individual level. Then, based on that, you can be able to anchor onto the different international frameworks and be able to fetch resources that you think can fit within the context of a national level. Now, on, on the Rwandan level, <coughs> The, the policy does exist. And the implementation effort towards that policy has been underway for the past couple of years. And wh what we saw uh, during the process is we identified the different forms of harm to not just children, uh, but even post-teenage age, uh, what, what kind of harm actually is available online. And you have things like uh, sexting, online grooming, fake news and misinformation, screen time, explicit and inappropriate content, uh, cyberbullying, uh, online reputation, online pornography, self-harm, radicalization, especially for uh, <coughs> extremists or governments that have uh, segments of society that are very extreme uh, because of religion, race, um, politics and stuff. Uh, then privacy and identity theft. Yeah, and this is very, very common online. And then online uh, commercialization, where young children are being used for, for commercial purposes. Now, there are different forms <coughs> of how to mitigate this at the national level. Uh, for Rwanda, <coughs> uh, we have the national regulatory authority, especially for um, uh, 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 dig digital content, uh, like television and radio. And for anyone to be afforded a license, for example, there are certain thresholds that he has to uh, 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 abide with. And, and, and some of them include protection of children. So if you have uh, a digital television that you want to start, for example, you need to make sure that within your broadcast you have the, 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 <coughs> this, the procedure on how a parent can be able to uh, follow certain commands and be able to set uh, his decoder uh, into the child online protection uh, mode. There are certain uh, things he, a child can, is not supposed to be able to, to see. But there's, there are also other efforts towards uh, uh, protecting children, making sure there's family time, making sure there's engagement, uh, talking, and making sure that parents are more friends to children than just being guardians and, 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 and control figures. Um, we, we, we can be available to share some of our content and some of the work we've done on the ground in Rwanda to see if it can uh, uh, help in, in, in framing it into your context and see if it can be able to be of use to, to you and to any other country that would be involved. Thank you. Thank you. I'd be very interested in that, and I, uh, I'm sure everyone else would be would find it very helpful too. And thank you for um, telling. And you're and you're right. 
um, looking at the national framework before uh, it's you know important before we go into the international framework. Yeah. Do we have any more contributions in the room? Hi, I think you can proceed on that basis. Sure. So um, again, my uh, my whole purpose in uh, you Sorry, know, uh, setting up this networking session was to um, just to hear from everyone else about what uh, kinds of problems. So I know that we've talked a bit about, uh, you know, protecting children online, and uh, I didn't even think about, um, you know, how they might be uh, in, uh, they might be uh, included into, uh, you know, maybe uh, drawn into, sorry, um, terrorist organizations or stuff like that. I was concentrating more on what was happening and what I've seen in Pakistan, and which is why I wanted to hear from everyone else uh, about what problems uh, countries have been facing um, online, um, whether it's, you know, revenge porn or uh, child pornography uh, or, you know, uh, you know, incessant messaging, uh, stalking, uh, you know, fake profiles. Um, I know that you know, other than Pakistan, we've heard of the revenge porn helpline in the UK. We've heard of, uh, I know that um, India has started, uh, point of view, Mumbai has started a helpline there as well. Um, and if there were any, um, you know, what direct, so I know that there's all these advocacy efforts that we try to do through the helpline as well. Because we have numbers, because we have uh, solid, you know, direct contact with people who are actually facing online harassment. We also feel it's our responsibility to, um, you know, advocate for people here in the, you know, in Pakistan, in South Asia, and to explain to social media companies and to tech companies uh, who are mostly based in the U.S., uh, in the West, and who don't understand our cultural context, maybe they don't they're not as willing to understand our cultural context and how they need to develop their policies and implement their policies in a different way or in a better way to make sure that it uh, that those policies are beneficial for us as well not just for the people in the west um, because we have different we just have different requirements and because we are the you know just because we use their platforms um, you know because we use facebook and instagram and twitter they have to adapt to us. Um, we shouldn't have to adapt to how they work. Um, they have to learn because they bring the product into our country. They have to make sure that they understand how people here think, how uh, what dangers we could face. Um, you know, one possible thing that I've uh, that I've seen is you know the definition of intimate images, for example. Um, that definition varies. Uh, you know, according to the U.S., for example, it might be, you know, that certain parts of the clothing um, or certain body parts are have to be visible or, you know, certain clothing uh, isn't there or it has to be two people, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the definition of intimate images over here might be very different. It, it, it could just be, you know, a bare shoulder showing. Um, which wouldn't fit their criteria, which wouldn't fit their definition, but it would have very serious repercussions in this part of the world, maybe. Um, and it's very difficult to try to get to understand that, uh, you know, that you the, the, at the very core of the issue is the very same. Um, but just because you've outlined, you've used specific words in your policies, in your community guidelines, that doesn't mean that uh, uh, it doesn't apply here so uh you know we, okay uh, yeah so that's uh you know helpline work doesn't mean just direct assistance it also means advocacy work so and yeah i'd like to hear yeah we have a contribution on the in the room as well good morning everyone hi aira uh let's introduce myself i'm vito guam from mozambique uh, i speak portuguese but i try to Translate it in English. My contribution is, I think that network security or internet use 
should not be simply done by tools like filters implemented by NIT. It should be seen as an education that starts in house from instruction from our parents. How to use the network tools, how to use the program. It must be started house. Thank you. Peter is my name. I come uh, from Uganda. I am a librarian in Nakaseke Public Library. Uh, I have a bit of a challenge as it regards to uh, internet security to, uh, to children. Uh, deep in the rural area, you'll find that uh, parents and guardians have uh, these smartphones and uh, what they know, how, what they use it for is just to make a call. But they have these children at home who are very, very enthusiastic in finding new things. They go online, sign up, download uh, funny photos and videos uh, without the knowledge of the parents. So I think the parents, my colleague is talking about, these are uh, the elite community but the rural poor communities do not know how to, um, they don't know anything about the internet, but they have the gadgets. I think the, 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 my call, my appeal goes to the uh, service providers. They should do not make it, they should find a way of making it difficult for uh, underage children to sign up because if it is very easy to sign up they will always uh, find a way of accessing the internet yes uh, thank you Jutta from Germany again I I wanted to answer to the question about parents' education, but I cannot more agree to what the librarian said, that it's not only, we don't only have parents who feel responsible, who have the knowledge, so we also need training for parents to know what their children are doing online, but nonetheless, we, we have to call for responsibility from the platform providers. And for example, in, in Germany, we had an amendment to the Youth Protection Act, which um, makes it obligatory for platform providers to take precautionary measures. That would mean that they have to know how old their users are, that they have to set more private settings for the younger users than for the older users. Of course, children then have the right to, to override these settings and to have more contacts. But when they start, it's like closed surroundings and then with these precautionary measures and then when they have learned and got acquainted with all the possibilities to have their privacy settings, for example, then they can go, go a step further and a step further. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Hannah Tesfaye. I'm from Ethiopia. I have just a concern on the child protection that the children are the more vulnerable ones in this digital uh, era, which uh, child pornography, the cyber bullying, the cyber stalking, the cyber harassment is more uh, an a, har uh, a more concerned one with the children because they are not the one with the uh, ability to stand up for them uh, for their uh, for themselves. So. My question for you is uh, the law enforcement or the after the crime is committed or the cyber crime is uh, committed on those children, the law enforcement or the perpetrators to come to justice, 
how can we handle the evidentiality or the other elements to enforce such uh, laws and to bring those uh, perpetrators to justice? How can we uh, use other experiences, other country experiences? Maybe you can share some. Or uh, what do you think about to combat these perpetrators and to bring, the, to bring them to justice? Because those are children, they don't know about their rights or uh, they don't know what their right is. Uh, to the limit, or what's their limit, or not? So, how can we uh, uh, how can we focus on the uh, law enforcement, or how can we protect them by uh, bring those uh, criminals into justice for the children? I'm so sorry. There was some. Um I think internet problem, I, I missed most of your question. You were talking about children and bringing those perpetrators into justice, but I'm not sure that I, um, I understood the first part of the question. Sorry, Haya, let's take another question here and then we'll get back to repeat the question. Or let's take the contribution, then we'll repeat the question. Um, hi, good morning, everyone. Mine is a contribution, actually. My name is Samira Dambram from Nigeria. Um, Haira initially asked what other countries are, are doing or have done regarding child of mind protection. Um, for Nigeria, I'll say starting from the 2020 guidelines that was released by the ITU, we were able to like localize those guidelines, having them in different languages. That, um, that is um, Pigeon, Pigeon English, we call it then Yoruba and Hausa and Igbo, which are the local languages spoken in Nigeria. And we did it in such a way that even a household or people who really didn't go to school can be able to read those guidelines and explain it to the children. Then aside that, we do carry out sensitization campaigns. I'm so sorry, I have a flu, so. <laughs> we do carry out sensitization campaigns going to schools. We also involve parents when doing this sensitization campaign. We target Parenting 101 for digital citizens because some of the parents are not as digitally literate as their children. And in Nigeria, sometimes you find that the child knows how to use the computer or his mobile phone way more than the children, so they try to outsmart them. We try to explain to them, these are the, these are the, the um, privacy, um, some technical privacy issues that happens on the internet and aside that all those security how you can be able to like set um, parental control measures when they try to access the internet and all of that then aside that we also um, have child helplines whereby the children can call directly and lay their complaints if they have any and also we have a dedicated email email address whereby the children can be able to like lodge in their complaint if they happen to if they happen to find uh, to fall a victim of any online threat then we also try to advocate for having like um child online protection clubs in secondary schools each time we go on carrying on these sensitization campaigns so that their ch teachers and the children can be able to sit discuss explain the hazards that are being faced online thank you Thank you so much. Haira, we'll just repeat the question and then we wrap up. Okay. I think she got some points that I mentioned, but the, my question was how to combat the impunity. Uh, what I what I was mentioning was the factor of the cyber crime, that the internationality, the dynamic city, and also the children are the more vulnerable group that they don't know their enemy, and also they don't know about their rights, and they are not even uh, they are not even uh, more familiar with the how the international uh, uh, how the international law works. So, uh, the factors of the, the collecting the evidences and the internationality of the crime, also such issues uh, to combat the impunity. Uh, if there is any uh, experience that you, uh, that you can share or that the anyone mentioned, or what would be the more favorable uh, way to combat the impunity and to come to justice, the perpetrators to come to justice.
honestly, uh, we haven't had much experience with that at the helpline, so I can't um, speak from experience. Um, but yeah, I think generally, as far as I know, uh, uh, when the victims uh, are children, law enforcement does seem to take much more seriously. But again, it's what I was. Um, I think the you know cross border collaboration that I was talking about earlier, it's it's especially needed when we're talking about children here. Um, uh, you know, countries, governments, law enforcement agencies, and based in different parts of the world, need to have a proper um, system set up. Uh, they need to start thinking about it much more seriously, uh, just to ensure uh, you know to get rid of all the bureaucratic. Um, uh, you know, the barriers that come up and uh, look at, you know, the children who comes first, the problem that comes first um, and set up a system like that to make sure that, um, you know, they, that they're able to catch perpetrators no matter where in the world they are um, and to make sure that uh, whatever damage has been done, so if so if there are pictures or videos online uh, or anywhere, uh, if they're being distributed, that those are, you know, captured and destroyed eventually. Um, and all of this can be done discreetly so that it doesn't harm the children in the future. Um, but yeah, if anyone else would like to um, answer her question or give any suggestions, um, that was it from my side. Thank you so much, Haira, and thank you so much, everyone. I think we'll close the session at this point. And invite everyone to just go downstairs for the opening session that I think is about to begin any time now. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you so much. I love. I really uh, appreciate. Uh, really appreciated um, hearing from all of you. Thank you.